I'm Don. I'm Lachelle. And we are Horse and Madness. Yes, yes we are. So, in our last episode we were talking about working for somebody else versus owning your own business. Yeah. And different types of jobs, um, not just the, you know, whether we were working in, in a restaurant as a waiter or waitress or whether we were working, so an hourly job. Right. You know, versus a salary job, that yep. kind of thing. So... In this episode, we thought we would talk about some of the things that you have to do to, to have a business. Sure. So, the simplest way to do it is to just pick something that you know that you are able to do and just start doing it and... It's a lot easier now because you can advertise on social media, right? get the word out there, and you can do word of mouth. You can go door to door. So like, you know, let's say you're a kid and you want to start mowing lawns. Right. And then... But you can do stuff like that too and not make it a business. Right? No, I mean... Not, not legally, no. Oh. So there's no more can you go around and mow lawns as a kid and it's like babysitting and you don't... It's not a business. That's a job. You're okay. a subcontractor. Okay. All right. I mean, I never turned my babysitting into a job. And, and you didn't used to have to do that. But now... Now you do. Anything... Unless everybody's paying you in cash, which most people aren't going to. That's true. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah, with the new... Because of whatever's changed with PayPal and Venmo and... But even before that, that, if people were paying with checks, sure. and that went into your bank account... Sure. So then... But what I was trying to get at was, regardless of what it was, I mean, you could sell stuff online. Right. And then you just report that income under your social security number when you filled out your taxes. That's the simplest way to have a business. Gotcha. Okay. So most people, if you're really going to have a business and it's not like a side hustle right. kind of thing, you are going to set it up with the state, um, get an, an EIN, you're going to set yourself up as... Uh, a limited liability corporation or uh, an S Corp, C Corp kind of thing, or you're going to be fully incorporated depending on how big of a business you're going to have. Right. And does EIN stand for something? <coughs> I'm sure it does. <laughs> okay. We're not sure what that's called. But yeah, so it basically the it's like the business's social security number almost, right? The EIN number Employees is. Employee's income number maybe? Could I don't be. know. I don't know either. We've, we've always just called it an EIN number. Everybody calls it that. So it, right. I don't, I've never gone. So you have to have that. that. And then if you sell stuff, you've got to get a sales tax number. Right. But you have to have an EIN number first to even be able to open a business account, like at a bank. Right. And, and get the rest of the stuff that you want to do. Now, if right. you're a, a trade business and you work hourly, like mowing lawns or, you know, doing construction or babysitting, that kind of thing, Right. then there's not sales tax on that. You're right. a contract employee. and That's like what we do with Star Entertainment. We don't, correct. We don't have tax on stuff. We don't have sales tax. Sales tax. That's right. what I mean. Right. So my first business, I was lucky enough that it was already an existing business. Right. And so everything was already set up and running. Yeah. So all I had to do was go... And get my own, I had to set up my own LLC, get my own bank account, and then transfer everything over to that. Sure. And then I had a, I was buying it on contract and I had monthly payments that I had to make from there. Okay. Um, it was a large enough business that it had enough income to where I, it could afford to have one person that was a full-time employee spend about 20 hours a week doing the books. Okay. So. So they worked full-time, but half of that time was spent working on the books and half of that time was working for the company doing other stuff. Right. On a regular weekly basis, it might only be like 10, 12 hours. Gotcha. And then at the end of the month, it would be a little bit more than that. And then quarterly, there was, you know, some extra stuff. So it averaged out to about 20 hours. And then they did 20 hours worth of stuff. Gotcha. Okay. And then, um, depending on the time of year or whether I had full-time employees or part-time employees, because I usually had a mix of them, I would have anywhere from 8 to 15 employees. 
Okay. So one of the hard things in a small business like that with having a lot of part-time employees, a lot of my part-time employees were kids. Sure. Compared, I mean... Teenagers. Yeah. I mean, I was only, I don't know, 26, 27. Right. But yeah, these were high school kids. Right. And so you become like a second parent yes. to them. Yes. You know? And so it's hard when they screw up. It's really hard to uh, to not act like a parent and want to teach them a lesson and, and make sure that you stay in that zone of being a boss. Right. But at the same time, if you have that relationship with you where you're like a parent, then it's easier to forgive them when they make a big mistake, you know? Right. Whereas if it was like a corporate thing, a big enough mistake, they're just gone and you're hiring somebody new the next day. Right. Um, so, it, you know, there were pluses and minuses to that, both right. sides. Um, in a college town, I had, I probably had three or four high school kids at a time and three or four college kids at a time. And then I had a staff of four or five that were full-time people. Okay. And so over the summer, you know, some of the college kids would leave and then the high school kids would pick up more hours. So right. it just really kind of fluctuated. Right. So kind of going back, you said in order to kind of set up the business, and again, we're not legal advisors and no. it's different by state. So definitely check with somebody in your state, in your area, make sure that what you need to do within that area is actually happening. But yes. where we are at here in Iowa City, Iowa, you needed the EIN number and that goes through the state that right. you fill out the forms to make that happen. And then from And that there, registers your, your company. Right, as and a company. Then and else, you usually have a company name. Right, and then nobody else can take your, your name in the state. Right, right. And so then we also have... Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about this now, but you have the, the business name and then you have a do business as name. Right. Yes. And we, a lot of people our, don't realize that. Right. At, even at the pet store, we I had a, an LLC name and then right. the name of the pet store was Pedigree. Right. Um, but so what I was getting back to or what I was talking about with the fact that everything was already set up and running and I just took over. So I right. already have the books. Right. Right. So... I think we took over either at the end of second quarter or the end of third quarter, you know, so it was a quarterly break and then everything moving forward was our stuff. But then, you know, I'm still using the same payroll information, all right. of that kind of stuff. It's just the payroll checks are coming out of an account under my name. Right. And then I'm paying the sales tax and, right. and all of that kind of stuff. Right. And then... Um, the big, other big thing was we did have to sign a new lease with the landlord. Um, all of that kind of stuff gets really tricky. And yes, I would advise anybody if you're having a Absolutely. business um, that's a retail business, if you aren't buying the, the property yourself and, or owning the building yourself, I would definitely have a lawyer to write up your business. Uh, and if you're a partnership, to write up your business partnership to help file all that paperwork. And then... I would definitely uh, want an attorney to go over right. any kind of a lease. Right. Leases can be very tricky. Yeah. Well, and in general, a lot of that stuff can be tricky. And there's different, there's even different types of business lawyers. We have found, as we've done stuff, that sometimes we'll go and, yes, they're a business lawyer, but then when we ask them to write it up, they write it up as if we're a corporation like Amazon. You know, yes. and so yeah. a we contract asked, we that we asked for. We asked for a simple for, contract for... For something, which we, we were like figuring it would take all of two to five pages. No, one to two pages. One to two pages. Okay. One to two pages is what it really should have taken. And it ended up being like 15. Yes. By the time this lawyer was done with it. Because they were writing it for a larger corporation like Amazon. Something that's huge. That's going to, you know, do a lot of different things. And they were trying to cover all of those bases. And that's not something that we were going to do when it was just the two of us for right. star entertainment. Um, and so then you, you also need to kind of know a little bit about what you are looking for, um, and find that kind of niche lawyer that fits the size of your company and what they do as well. So shop around a little bit too. Um, but yeah, so the first business that you owned, you kind of were able to get into, it was already established. You didn't have to establish it, but you still had to go through that process of 
creating your own LLC and right. But what I was the part that I'm talking about where I was lucky was that because everything was already up and running, and me and um, my wife at the time bought this business together. We had been managing the the business. You know, right. she mostly did all the paperwork, but I would also do paperwork. So right. I knew how to do the daily paperwork. I knew how to do the payroll if I had to. I knew how to do um, to submit the sales tax um, and right. quarterlies and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I wouldn't have the slightest idea how to do it now. Right. Um, I do I do, do <coughs> sales tax every once in a while for the game store because sometimes I'll sell stuff locally. Sure. But the majority of my sales are out of the state of Iowa. So there isn't anything there. Right. Um, that When I said that I was lucky that everything was already set up, that's what I was talking about. Right. Um, I didn't have to start QuickBooks from scratch right. or, you know, whatever. Right. I don't even remember what program we had. I don't know if we had QuickBooks. I know that we, whatever book work stuff we used, we also used, um, A spreadsheet that wasn't uh, it wasn't Excel. I feel like it was like it was Linux. Could be. I don't know. Um, but we also kept everything in a spreadsheet and made sure that they both matched up. I don't know why we did right. both, but that's well, just always the way think, it had been done. Yeah, and I think part part of it again. You started. You took over this company in what ninety six, I think. And so at that time, I mean, computers were still fairly new to a certain extent. And so I remember, because my parents owned a business while I was growing up, and I remember helping them, and they would do all of their stuff in on paper. They had, all of their accounting was done on paper, and then during school breaks, my job was to take what was in paper and put it into an Excel sheet, so then they could take it to the CPA, and the CPA would look over it, kind of idea. And so they didn't use QuickBooks or anything, everything was done on paper. And so I think that's part of it is it's just at that time, the computer systems that were there, there wasn't something necessarily like QuickBooks that did all of that for you. Or if you did, you had to be a really large company to afford it potentially at that time. I don't know. I don't know the history of that. But now it's a little bit more set up to where there is small business and large business for right. QuickBooks and things that way. So there's there's more opportunities to, to make things electronic and, and computerized in that way. So, um, what we had talked about before that, about just having a business where you, um, put all of the money that you got and filed it on your social security number. Mm -hmm. When I had curb appeal, that's how curb appeal was set up. Oh, okay. I didn't have, um, an EIN. I didn't have a, a business account. Right. I just had to keep track of everything in a spreadsheet, and then at the end of the year, it went into my taxes, as right. income, and I just put it, deposited everything into my account. Right, and I'm pretty sure that's how my interpreting <clears throat> has been set up. I don't know if that's gotten switched now because of the other businesses that we owned. If we, I can't remember if we wrapped it into the other businesses. No, when we it's, did start it's still, still done separate. on your, yeah. That's what I thought. So, yeah, that's the way. Because, again, the majority of it you do through somebody else. Yes. So you're getting paid by somebody else. Yes. As a, as a subcontractor, and it just goes under your social security number. Yep. So they don't pay you as an hourly employee and take out taxes. No. It just goes on, on your social security number. Right, which is something to think about if that's something you're doing, because then in the long run, too, you will have to pay taxes if you've yes. made enough money. If, and you're, if you were interpreting full-time and having to put all of that money into your account, you would then need to remember hey, I need to keep about 30% of whatever I'm making back so that I can pay taxes. Specifically a, for taxes, not not just keep it back because <clears throat> for a rainy day. Like that, 30% yes. of that is getting pulled for taxes and you're going to pay that at either quarterly or or I don't know how, what they are. Is it quarterly in Iowa that we pay taxes on stuff like that? No, if you were a big enough business and you were making enough money, you could do quarterly. Okay. But for like something like what you're doing, you would just do it. Just yearly yeah. when you do taxes? Okay. So if it's under just your social security number kind of thing. Well, if it's under your social security number and you're making enough money, it, they want you to do it quarterly because they don't want you to have to send in a check of $30,000 at the end of the year. Gotcha. Okay. So. Yeah. So that's, that's something to think about and to make sure that you're 
again, working with somebody that knows that information if you're not familiar with it yourself, um, because it can get really stressful at the time when all of a sudden you've got to make that payment for your taxes. And if you didn't save enough back, they don't care. They, right. they still want their money. Yes. So that's on you. <laughs> and a lot of, a lot of newer businesses when they're, when they're small, they will set up two business bank accounts, right? One to put their sales into and one to put the sales tax in. Right. So they don't accidentally spend, right. You know, like, placing a big order of for inventory and accidentally spend their sales tax because if you don't have the money that you have made in sales tax to pay the sales tax when it's due the IR, the state IRS state treasury department whatever will come and padlock your business until you pay it yeah yes yes they don't mess around with that right I mean they, they'll give you some warnings hey you're a right. little bit late but yeah if you can't pay it they come and they shut your business down. Right. It's, it's not something you want to mess around with. No. Because people have paid that money in on top of, you know, right. your, the candy bar that they bought. If it was a dollar, they paid an extra seven cents. That money is supposed to go to the state. It's never your money. Right. At any point in time. Right. So if you have good enough cash flow where you're bringing in enough money and you have a, a balance in your bank account, it's usually not something that you need to worry about. Right. But, you know, I know people that just as a safety thing... They, they keep it separate. Yeah. That makes sense. Absolutely. Um, all of the other businesses that I have had, other than Curb Appeal, I've had an EIN number four. Whether it was one EIN number and then the DBAs or whether they had a separate and DB, EIN number. And DBA stands for doing, doing business, doing business as. as. So, so like our company is not Star Entertainment. It's not Morrison Madness. Right. It's Ladue. Right. Incorporated or Ledoux LLC or something like that. And then right. we have businesses under that. And Star Entertainment and Morrison Mendes fall under Ledoux. Right. And so that's and something so that we Doom created. Bro. Right. Yep. So, so we yeah. have separate bank accounts for each one of those businesses because we like to know which business is making money and which right. one's not. But right. it's all the same. when in, At the end of the year when you file your taxes, you're filing under... The main business. Right. The, so, the EIN. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit different that way. And they they want to know which business is doing making money, right? If my if I remember correctly or no. They don't. The, the IRS doesn't care which business is making money. Okay. Who cares is the bank. Okay. So let's say we all of a sudden decide that we want to open a game store. Right. Right. If we didn't keep the books separate for Star Entertainment and do more and Morrison Madness, and let's say the game store was under right. uh, Ledoux, but it's not. It it's has not. its own. Right. Um, and we decide we, we're going to buy a piece of land right. or buy a building and open a, a game store and not rent a space anymore, then I'd have to be able to show the bank that this business makes money. Right. Right. Or like with Star Entertainment, let's say we wanted to buy a, an event center. Right. Right. We've got to show that Star Entertainment makes money. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So all the all the IRS, whether it's state or federal, cares about is you showing all of the money that you've brought in, all of the expenses that you paid, and then you have to pay taxes on the difference. Right. And then if you have employees, you have payroll taxes, which is a different thing. Right. Right. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of different kinds of expenses and payments and almost accounts. They're not accounts. They're all in one bank account, so it's not like necessarily separate bank accounts, but you have to think of them as almost separate accounts. Well, you accounts. can do them as separate bank yeah. accounts, or you can just do them in se separate uh, QuickBook accounts or QuickIn accounts or whatever right. accounting software you're using. Right. So, yeah. So it, it can get really complicated pretty quickly when you're getting into it. And it, and that's something that takes quite a bit of time, which for me is a detriment. That's part of the thing that I would rather work for someone else and let somebody else deal with that. Um, and part of that is because when you first start a business, a lot of times you can't hire somebody out front to do that kind of work for you. You're having to do it yourself. Um, but once you get to the point where your business can hire somebody to do that, then it's a little less stressful. And we've gotten to that point as well, again, with Star Entertainment, that Star Entertainment is now hiring somebody to do more of that uh, paperwork, business, accounting side of things and payroll and what right. have you. 
And so then we're not... Because your time is more valuable doing the thing that you're in business to do. Absolutely. If you're having to spend, you know, 10 hours a week doing book work... And if you're not familiar with it, you're going to spend more than 10 hours a week doing it. And so then when you're having to build your business, you're, you're wanting to put full time into whatever your business is. And so then you're having to work more than full time, which can be exhausting as well as stressful and frustrating. So yes. um, those are things to keep in mind if you're thinking about building a business, that it's going to be more than just what you are currently interested in doing. There's a lot of other factors, and that's kind of where we're leading into. But I feel like we're at a pretty good stopping point, I think, before the next episode. Or do you? is there something else you wanted to talk about? No, yeah, I feel like the, the clock let us know that it's probably a good place to stop. <laughs> Um, so yes, we, we, I feel like we're going to do at least one more episode on this, um, and yeah. just talk about some other stuff, uh, pertaining to businesses. Um, but, and if you have any questions, please, you know, ask, or if you have any comments, um, or if you feel like there's something that we're getting wrong, you know, please <laughs> let us know. Yes. Check absolutely. us out on, on all of the social medias, all the podcast players. Right. Yeah. We're, we're on what are we on? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You might be watching us right now on YouTube. If not, if you're listening on a podcast player, we're also on YouTube. If you want to see us sitting at the table drinking coffee while we're talking. Um, and then make sure you're commenting, liking, sharing, helping us get out there. We appreciate it. And Absolutely. And yeah, let us know if, if there's things that you want us to talk about. Specifically right now with the business stuff, we're happy to answer questions, things that way. Um, and do shout outs for you here in the podcast. So. And if you ask a question and we don't know the answer, we will just flat out say, have you know, no idea. That's yes. not something that we know the answer to. You should go <laughs> check with a professional. We are not CPAs. No. We are not business lawyers. We are not tax people. Right. We, we pay people to do that stuff for us. Absolutely. We're just talking about from our experience of starting a business, running a business, the kinds of things that people should be aware of. Absolutely. So until next time. Take care. Take care.